Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A very warm welcome to my dear friends and students. Uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And as you know, this is the DADM 2 lecture, which is Data Analysis and Decision Making 2. And this is lecture number 5. And this, to, this whole course is for 12 weeks, which is 30 hours. Each week we have uh, 5 lectures. And um, after each, and each being lecture being for half an hour, and after each week we have an assignment. So, we will be wrapping up week 1, and we will have assignments based on assignment 1. Then, similarly, once we finish any week, we will have assignment based on that week and proceed accordingly till we have the final examination. And I am Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department, IIT Kanpur. So, if you remember, we Initially, in the last two classes, I will just wrap it up within uh, two minutes and then uh, like recapitulate and then proceed with uh, lecture number 5. So, we had two different concepts which was basically relative risk aversion and, and absolute risk aversion. And these properties were basically which I mentioned was theoretically they have some formulas and I must just give the background based on which you can basically prove it. But their actual utilization, I said, would be coming up later on. And for the quadratic utility function, we did prove. I didn't go through the details, but you can just simply do it by finding on the first differential and the second differential that we find out u prime and u double prime. Put the ratio, which is u double prime divided by u prime with the minus sign. Find out a, then correspondingly find out a prime. So, similarly, find out R and R prime and then comment on the um, this absolute risk aversion property and the relative risk aversion property with respect to whether they are greater than 0, equal to 0 and less than 0. Based on that, we can say that it will it is uh, that quadratic utility function or whatever the utility function is, which I am mentioning that all the utility functions would have properties based on A prime and R prime and they would be distinct. So, based on that, we can comment. So, let us further continue the discussion with other three different utility functions, which I had briefly mentioned. So, the first we have already done, which was quadratic utility function, then there would be power utility function, exponential utility function and um, uh, logarithmic utility function. So, now for the quadratic utility function, I did not wrap it up, the last stages were left. So, if you plot uh, the Excel sheet, Excel sheet which I just showed was basically the last slide which was there. In the first column, you have the values of W. I took arbitrarily some values of W, then you have UW based on the value of B, that is a parameter which you had. Then in the next two columns which I, mean you, uh, which I did not write, or did not did not um, explicitly show it, but I did mention that you find out the difference of u, so that means u2 minus u1, u3 minus u2, u4 minus u3, that means 1, 2, 3, 4, these suffixes are corresponding to the time periods or which w values are there. You find it that, that in the third column, similarly you find out on the fourth column, again the fourth column was not shown there, you find out the values of difference of the values of w, that is w2 minus w1, w3 minus w2, w4 minus w3 and so on and so forth. Then we basically divide the third column values, respective values with the fourth column respective values and you find out u prime as the simple definition of, of differentiation. Then we have to find out the second differentiation which will be basically now the differences of the third column which is basically u prime values which you have. So, basically you define find out the difference of u prime prime for the second period minus the u prime for the first period. Then you find out the u prime for the third period minus the u prime for the second period and go and so on and so forth. And then again you divide these values corresponding cell value written in fifth co column by the corresponding values of uh, difference of w's that is w2 minus w1, w3 minus w2 so on and so forth and you find out the u double prime. Once you find out the u double prime, then as per the formulas, you can put it and find out A, 
then similarly you can put these values and find out r and then again follow the same concept to find out the difference of a2 minus a1 divided by w2 minus w1 then find out the value of a3 minus a1 divided by a3 minus a2 sorry and find out the values of w3 minus w2 similarly you find out the difference of r2 minus i1 divided by w2 minus w1 find out the difference of r3 minus r2 divided by w3 minus w2 that means you are finding on the differential such, such that you have a prime and r prime and once you plot it the values which you have in this this simple graph uh, it is not possible to see the other values but at least if you can see where I am just marking this let me use the color pink if it is available let me use the, the highlighter it will be best. Mm, the orange one. So, this is basically the value of u which is this, this is a quadratic one if you can see. Then similarly in the next the index or the coloring you have I will just mark it. I will just put a tick mark you have a w which is in yellow it is somewhere here if you can plot it it will be much better for you. Then the bluish green one is a prime then the violet one is for r and the brown one is for r prime if you plot it you will get the characteristics curves for this u a a prime r r prime for the quadratic utility function. Then let us go to the logarithmic utility function which is ln of w and then if you want to find out a and r again the formulas you will use would be for a would be minus u double prime by u w and for r it will be basically minus w into u double prime by w put those values accordingly that means find out um, u prime and u double prime for ln of w u prime is 1 by w and similarly for the value of uh, u double prime would be minus 1 by w square. These formulas are very simple you can check up any class 10 or 11 uh, basic um, differential equation or basic mathematics book and then basically and can utilize them accordingly. So, once you find out a prime and a r prime the values which are come out to be for a prime would be minus 1 by w square and for r prime it comes out to be 0. So, if it is w is positive so obviously square is also obviously a positive. So, a prime would be negative and r prime would be 0. So, we can immediately comment we use this type of utility function that means if we have this information that is a, it has got decreasing absolute risk aversion property and constant relative risk aversion property you can find out and, and comment that this is a logarithmic utility function. So, similarly again now you should draw the um, um, graph. So, before that we will basically put the values in the excel sheet follow the same procedure as we, as we have done for the quadratic utility function. So, this is also the excel sheet based on which uh, we, we can solve and at least draw the logarithmic utility function. The first column is the values of w again you can take any values of w I have to make our life simple I have taken the values as 1, 2, 3, 4 so on and so forth they can be decimal also and they can be any other higher values also. Based on that I find out ln of w, ln of w values are given in, in the second column which is this. which is these values. Now, third and fourth column are missing which I have not noted down, but I will just uh, because it would have become too cluttered, but I will just mention it again. I may, may be going a little bit slow. I know that I am repeating few things time and again for each each concept, but please bear with me it will it will be much easier for me to follow a sequence point one and repeating such things would definitely make things much better for you to understand. If somebody has understood that uh, before and with, with one of my repetition I would um, uh, tell them to have the patience. So, let me go slowly and cover the concepts. So, if I basically use the highlighted yellow, so okay, I have to basically write down. So, what you will have here one would be basically be, so these are the use uh, the second column. So, technically I would have one column where I will basically find out u 2 minus u 1 
then I will find out u 3 minus u 2 and continue accordingly. So, two, 1, 2, 3 are basically the time periods and they are uh, the values have been taken purposefully for our example as equidistance. There would be another column and let me use a different color. There would be another column which would be the fourth one which will basically have values of w 2 minus w 1. Then the next value in the cell corresponding just below that would be w 3 minus w 2 I will continue accordingly. So, this would basically be the fourth column values. So, these are the fourth column values and these are the third column values. Now, in the fifth column you will basically have a. So, a how do you find out a use, use the formula minus of u double prime by u prime. So, how do you find out u prime? u prime would basically be the, the corresponding value of u 2 minus u 1 divided by w 2 minus w 1. So, next value would be u 3 minus u 2 minus w 3 minus w 2. Next value would be u 4 minus u 3 divided by w 4 minus w 3. You find out those values. So, that would basically be the denominator for a prime a sorry a and for finding out the numerator of a again you different find out the first differential of the third column values. That means, the difference of this and this. Similarly, the difference of it will be basically u 4 minus u 3 minus of u 3 minus u 2. So, that would be give me the those each corresponding cell values again divided by w this w values which I have utilizing that you can find out the corresponding values of u double prime. Once you have the u double prime with the minus sign uh, as per the formula you find out a then find out the first difference of the a values divide by again the difference of w's find out a prime put in the formula of r find out the r values find out the first differential that means r2 minus r1 then the next value is r3 minus r2 so on and so forth then divide them by the corresponding values of w's that means w2 minus w1 w3 minus w2 so on and so forth find out r prime so if you notice then as for the logarithmic one r prime was mentioned is neg is neg is 0 we have calculated it. So, actually rightly so the last column which is shown here comes out to be 0 and if we remember for the values of a prime we mentioned the values was coming out to negative. So, whatever value you take you can just double check in an excel sheet the values really come out to be negative. So, with this we have been able to at least very in a very simplistic sense check that the, the actual calculation based on simple mathematics or differentiation is being corroborated or, or double checked when we basically take very simple values of, of wealth and then put them in the utility function which is logarithmic utility function and check the values of a a prime and r r prime. Now, we need to draw the graph I am going the same sequence of steps as I did for the quadratic utility function. If you draw the graph put those values and then basically find out um, um, the and plot the values of u then a a prime r r prime you can check the values which are given I will just use the highlighter of the green one. So, the pink one is u prime I will just mark that. Then the yellow, yellow one is A which is shown here I am not going to mark it, but I am just going to move my pointer above that without marking. Then similarly the bluish green one is A prime which is also there. Then R and R prime are given here in these values and they actually corroborate and double verify the fact which we have already discussed considering the simple differentiation. So, that completes this a very simplistic way of trying to first do for the quadratic one then the logarithmic one. So, we are left with two more uh, logarithmic uh, utility function and I will follow the same procedure Maybe I am taking time, but that will definitely clear your doubts. Uh, the problems ok just I am di not digressing I am just um, uh, changing the topic to some related for the um, assignments. For the assignments they would definitely not be any diagram part let me make it very clear. So, it will be more conceptual part of problem solving. The problem solving which you remember I had one of the problems which I solved was basically based on uh, a person investing in a government um, security or government bond with respect to 
a non deterministic one there were three outcomes and each had a probability and you had a utility function. So, those type of simple problems would be coming, there would be other problems which I will discuss. So, concentrate on that. The reason I am I am going slow for drawing drawing the diagrams for the utility function is basically to make you understand that what I actually mean by the concept of r r prime a a prime for because for each utility function they would some have some unique characteristics based on which you can basically immediately say that the utility function is either logarithmic or quadratic or exponential or power depending on what are the characteristics of a prime and r prime. So, without much ado let me continue with the third utility function. The third utility function is the exponential one. So, we, um, again if you put in the formula and find out uh, the u prime and u double prime using the simple differentiation concepts and if you put them in your equation the value of a prime comes out to be 0 and the value of r prime comes out to be a, a is positive here. So, we use the utility function and if we find out we will immediately say, say that the absolute dispersion property is, is um, constant or as, as it is 0 by the second first bullet point and if I consider the, the value of a as positive then r prime is a so hence we will say it is a increasing um, relative risk conversion property. So, if we rather than the utility function if we had these properties mentioned to us correspondingly to the fact that r prime and a prime is either increasing or decreasing or equal to 0 similarly r prime has this property of either increasing or decreasing or equal to 0 immediately put them in, into our in the right context and, and basically can mention that what type of utility function it is. So, I will try to again go through the same sequence of steps as we did for the quadratic utility function and the logarithmic utility function. You plot the values of w in the first column in an excel sheet put the values of u w, u w is basically that exponential utility function with a certain value of a. Let us not be too much bothered of a, a would be 0 0.25, but what I am trying to highlight is that how you draw the graphs in order to basically make yourself very acquainted in a very simplistic and practical sense that how the utility functions can be plotted. Then again in the third column, I am not going to write much in this, in this slide, but again explain to you. So, if you listen to me, you will definitely understand. In the third column, you will basically have the difference of the utility functions, which is u2 minus u1, u2, 3 minus u2, so on and so forth. In the fourth column, you will have the difference of the w values, which is given in the first column. So, it will be w2 minus w1, w3 minus w2. And based on that, once you can, you are able to find out u prime. Once u prime is found out, then you will basically find out the first differential of, of the u prime values. That means, it will be u 3 minus u 2 minus in the bracket u 2 minus u 1 continue in this way and then divide by the values of, of del w, del w is basically w 2 minus w 1 similarly the next value would be w 3 minus w 2 so on and so forth. Once you put them in, in, the, uh, in, in the cell values in the corresponding columns, so the columns are not shown here, those particular columns corresponding to the first difference, difference of use or the second difference of u primes are not shown here. So, once you basically find out the first difference of the um, of u primes and divide by them by the delta w, you will basically have the u double prime put them in the formula which is minus u double prime by u w, you find out a values. So, if you find out the a values are coming out to be constant, then finding out a prime would obviously be 0 which basically corroborates with our actual in a set of, of uh, uh, information which is given for this utility function which we just have covered in the last slide. The value comes out to be 0. Correspondingly, we again we find out r, r is basically minus w into u double prime by u, u prime, put them in the equation and find out that means, we do the same steps uh, as we did for a, a, a and a prime, only that change would be you are multiplying by the value of w. So, once you put find out r, you find out the values of, um, of r prime, r prime comes out to be constant which is a as per the formula. So, it basically has an increasing relative risk conversion property. Now, let us uh, draw these curves. So, this curves uh, uh, if you remember a is positive which is uh, and with a negative sign it will basically be an exponential function, but it will be decreasing. So, I will again just highlight it using the color green. So, this is the pink one graph where I am just now highlighting is the 
the utility function which is here. Similarly, you will have the yellow color which is given here. I am not highlighting, um, uh, but I am just pointing out, out this is the utility function, the a value for the utility function. Then the greenish blue one is the a prime, then the violet one is r and the, again the, uh, the brown colored is r prime. So, for all these graphs, uh, again we have the third, fourth graph also, for all these graphs, I am using the same color scheme in order to make you understand. So, it is my earnest request, please at least for this first week of lectures, uh, before you solve the problems, whatever has given, please, please draw these graphs in order to make you understand that what are the util functions and what is the significance of A and A and R and corresponding to that, what is the significance of A prime and R prime. Now, let us come finally to the power util function. The C values um, can, can be taken as positive or negative depending on the problem. I am not going to the nitty gritties of that, I am just giving you a feel of how you can you know, find out the characteristics of the util function. So, find out, um, you first find out u, u prime, then you find out u double prime, put them in the equation and then you find out with the, obviously with the minus sign that is minus of u double prime by u prime will give you the a value. Differentiate again with respect to w. So, whenever I am using the word differentiation for all these problems, it is differentiation with respect to the variable which is w which is the wealth. So, once you differentiate um, A, you find out A prime, it comes out to be minus um, bracket C minus 1 by W square. So, W square obviously is positive, if C is positive greater than 1, you will have basically um, A prime as uh, positive. If it is um, less than 1, obviously it will be um, negative. So, you will have basically decreasing absolute risk aversion property. So, here we and uh, actually it would be. So, we can immediately comment that um, there is a decreasing absolute risk aversion property and this and along with the fact that when we find out r and r prime the r prime value comes out to be zero so it will be have it will it will basically have a constant relative risk aversion property so with these two properties for absolute risk aversion property and relative risk aversion property which is given as decreasing absolute risk aversion property and constant re relative risk aversion property you can immediately uh, point to the fact that the utility function would be power utility function similarly as I mentioned, depending on, on this combinations of R prime and A prime, whatever you have, you can find out the unique um, utility function based on which you can work. So, now let us go to the last stage of the uh, utility function, which is the fourth utility function, which is to, to basically find out the values corresponding to some hypothetical values at W and plot the utility function graph. Again, we follow the same procedure, plot the values of W in the first column, then in the second column you have the values of uw depending on the c values which you take. In the third and fourth column which is not given, you basically find out u, u difference of u, that means the differences, corresponding differences of the values in, uh, in the cells for the second column. Then you find out in the fourth column the corresponding difference in the cell values corresponding to the fact that uh, it is for the first column which is basically w2 minus w1, w3 minus w2 so on and so forth. Divide the corresponding cell values of the third and the fourth column you get basically a u prime. Similarly, you find out the difference of the u prime values and divide those corresponding values with w difference or, or del w you get u double prime. Once u prime and um, uh, u double prime are found out, you immediately know, put in the formula, find out a, find out a prime. That means, a prime would again be calculated in the same way that you find out the first difference of a divided by the first difference of w, that is del a by del w. Once you plot it, the a values are, 8 prime values are given here in this uh, sh the slide so number 53 is given in the fourth column. Similarly, you go into the next step, find out uh, given A, you find out R which is given in the second last column and then again find out the difference of R divided by the difference of W which is del R by del W will give you the values of R prime. So, R prime you find out is 0 is exactly matches with what are the calculations we have done and based on that you can basically immediately comment that what are the absolute risk aversion property, what are the um, uh, relative risk aversion property based on that you can comment is a power utility function. So, let us draw it. So, again I follow the same scheme in the, in the same set of information which I have you plot 
this I am doing each time, but I, I did not mention it. So, what you do is that plot the values of w on the x axis, the values of u a a prime r r prime. You can have done drawn in, in, in five different excel sheets, but I just merge them together in order to make you understand. Obviously, it becomes it is not cluttered if you can zoom in and when you draw it zoom in and zoom out, you can have a much better feel that how the graphs look like for different values of w. So, the values of, of u w is given by the pink curve which is this. Similarly, the values of a, a prime, r and r prime are respectively given by the colors of yellow which is this one I am not uh, highlighting just following the pointer. Then the bluish green, green one is the a prime and the r and r prime which are colored as violet and, and um, uh, brown are given here. So, you can basically find out using the graphs the properties of all the four util functions. Whatever util functions you can have follow this simple concept of trying to basically plot the value of um, given any hy hypothetical values of w plot u then plot from the find out the value uh, the plot the plot means mark the values of u prime mark the values of u double prime then go into find out the using these values of u prime and u double prime you find out a then find out a prime then proceed to find out r and plot and find out the value r prime plot them and basically pass your comments accordingly. So, you are basically double checking whatever you have done mathematically using simple derivatives which you have already done. Now, let us uh, go into very simple examples. So, this is the examples which I am talking about. So, but I will again repeat please, please draw this excel sheet in order to make your, yourself accustomed with the way how the util functions look like depending on the different values of, of the parameters which is a, c or whatever there is or, or b which are there for different of, of the util functions. Technically for the quadratic utility function you will have the parameters if it is a quadratic equation it will you will have basically a b c similarly for the exponential one um, uh, util function you will have the parameter a for the power util functions you had the parameter of c so depending on the change and also on their range and to between which value to which value they can change you can plot the values and look like how the util functions themselves look look like depending on the different parameter values now, suppose the util function is given as, as w to the power 0 0.25 which is w to the power 1 fourth and we are required to find the properties of the util function and also draw the util function graph. I have not drawn the graph, but I am just going through the simple calculation. Find out u prime, u prime comes out to 1 fourth w to the power minus 3 by 4. Hence, we have proved as per the first property of non cessation that the u prime value is, is greater than 0 because 1 fourth is positive, w is also positive, w to the power any higher negative value would be 1 by that w value. So, it will be 1 by w to the power minus uh, not minus 3 by 4. So, w being, being positive obviously, this would, would always be positive. The main question is whether that increase in the u prime value is, is happening at is increasing rate or a constant rate or, or at a decreasing rate. Based on that we can comment whether the person loves risk, whether the person is indifferent to risk or whether the person hate risks. Now, we find out u, um, uh, u double prime, the u double prime value comes out with the minus value minus 3 by 16 w to the power minus 7 by 4. So, 3 by 16 is positive w to the power minus 7 by 4 is also positive. So, it is negative. Hence, the util functions has two fundamental properties of non cessation and risk aversion properties is basically agreed upon. So, with this I will end this fifth lecture with that means, we have we, we complete our first uh, week of classes and the examination on uh, the assignments which would be there sorry not the examination the assignments would be there would be based on the simple problems of trying to find out the utilities very simple problems. But again I will stress the fact that please read the concept of the utilities, the books which are already being discussed in the website which is there and I have discussed that that uh, the syllabus which is already given. These are a little bit on the higher level, but there are definitely very simple economics books from which you can get the concept of utilities and um, based on that brush up your uh, concepts if you know, do the problems solve the assignments and once the utility function is over, concept is over which I think should be over by within one or two lectures in the second week, we will start the concepts of different type of 
multi criteria decision making multi attribute utility theory and then proceed with with the actual content for DADM2 have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention